And so it's always the question is that if things fall apart around you, to what degree is it the mere tendency of things to degenerate entropically, because they do that of their own accord, or have you sped the probability of decay by failing to pay attention when, when a little snake manifests itself inside your paradise? And it's always, it's always a question. So, and here's, a, here's an example, an interesting example, I think. So I thought about the actual floods, like the New Orleans flood. Okay, so New Orleans is built where there are floods. Everyone knows that. And it's a major port in the United States. A huge part of American trade goes down the rivers to New Orleans. So there was a reason it was built where it was, even though it was a dangerous place to build it. And in order to maintain New Orleans, they had to build these levees that kept the water back. Now, the American, what is it, American... Army Corps of Engineers, if I remember correctly, was responsible for building and maintaining the levees and the dikes. Okay, Holland is also built underwater, as you may or may not know, and they built huge dikes to keep the ocean back so they could reclaim the land, and that's basically Holland. Holland is an unbelievably organized society, and part of the reason is, is it isn't land, it's underwater, and so if you're not bloody well awake in Holland, then the ocean comes in and you all drown. And so the Dutch are very, very careful about such things. And they build their dikes so that they calculate storm intensity. And then they calculate the intensity of the worst storm in 10,000 years. And then they build the dikes to withstand that storm. The Army Corps of Engineers built the dikes in New Orleans to withstand the worst storm in 100 years. And they knew that was insufficient. And New Orleans, Louisiana, is an unbelievably corrupt state. And you can't dump money in there to fix things because people just steal all the money. So, and then nothing gets fixed, and so then what happens? There's a hurricane, and then what happens? There's a flood, and everybody says, why would God send the flood? And the answer to that is, well, was there a flood, or were the dikes not high enough? And that's what's so interesting, is that it's always, this is a great father versus great mother conundrum. If a system fails, is it because of the surround overwhelming the system, or is it because the system was insufficiently awake and doomed itself. Okay, so Iliad's take on the flood myth is this. God comes along and floods the world periodically. Why? And that, that's the catastrophic influx of chaos, right? So chaos will wipe you out from time to time. Why? Well, entropy does in your conceptual schemes, and your willful blindness speeds the process. And remember, that's what the Egyptians said about Osiris, right? They said he was, he was a great king, a man of renown, but he was old. But he was also willfully blind. And it was the combination of his age and his willful blindness that allowed Seth to chop him up into pieces and, and depose him. And so, that, well, that, fair enough. It's brilliant, right? It's like, why do states fall apart? Because the structures get old, and no one's taking care of them, and people have their eyes closed. And so it's the same situation, it's the same situation in the flood myths. It's like, well, yeah, things fall apart, and they're going to flood, but if you were awake enough, and you were on top of it, then you could continually stave that off. And actually, partly what you're doing, because you're alive, is staving off entropy. Like, you're an anti-entropic process. That's a really good definition of life. There's a great physicist named Erwin Schrodinger who wrote a book called What is Life? And that's the fundamental thesis of the book. You're always trying to stave off entropy. What's the best way to stave off entropy? Decay, chaos, keep your eyes open. That's the rule. Shut your eyes, especially to things you know you should see, the flood comes. And that's the evil of man that's laid out in this story. Because that's the worst sort of, perhaps it's not the worst. It's one of the primary sins, so to speak, that will bring about the flood. We already talked about the other things that characterized Cain's attitude. So, 